This might be the best sieve to play as a beginner when learning how important districts are. Today we are going to be talking about Hojo of Japan. I will go over my preferred strategy for playing as Japan and I'll give him a ranking for each victory type as well as a final overall score. Remember that if you like this video or some of the other long form content on my channel, please leave me a like or comment telling me so. It really helps me get noticed by other people on YouTube and helps my little channel, which I put so much effort into, start to grow. Hojo may not be the most interesting Japanese leader anymore with the addition of Tokugawa and the leader pass, but he is still incredibly strong and a great way to play this game. His ability, Divine Wind, gives you three half-cost districts, a holy site, a theater square, and an encampment. You also get plus five combat strength on coastal or shallow water tiles, which is great since you're coastally biased. And hurricanes do not pillage you, but they do double damage to enemy units nearby, which is incredibly defensive, and that's strong in a game where the AI almost always rushes you early game. Now this is a strong ability, half cost districts are few and far between, and districts win this game. Every yield is predicated on having more districts. The more districts you can build, the better you're going to be, and Hojo builds more districts than anyone else, and it's simple math, his districts are stronger than everybody else's too. The districts you get are incredibly synergistic. Do you want to go culture? Holy sites and theater squares are needed for that. You want to go religion? Holy sites and theater squares are needed. Do you want to go for domination, holy sites, theater squares, and encampments are needed. So just these three districts, the most important districts, except for maybe encampments, helps you with multiple victory conditions. Now if that was all that Japan had, it would be a strong kit, but that's just the leader ability itself. The Civ ability, Meiji Restoration, is by far the strongest thing Japan has. All districts gain standard adjacency bonuses. That means instead of 0.5 per district, each district is now giving you a plus one bonus, turning every district into the government plaza, which is usually the strongest district that you always want to build around. Now let's say you build a flatland campus, as any other sieve in the game. If you surround it by six districts, including your government plaza, you're getting a plus three campus, which is just barely enough for rationalism. If you plug in rationalism, you'll have a plus Plus four science campus. If you also plug in the 100% adjacency card, that gives you plus three, which would uh, go up to a. Wow, is it plus three? So yeah, that gives you plus three, which would go up to a plus six, and then it would give you a total of plus seven, I think, for your district adjacency. Now let's say you do the same thing as Japan. Surround your campus with six districts, not including your government plaza, and now you have a plus six district. If you add in rationalism, that gives you a plus nine district. That's not including the 100% adjacency card. If you add that in, you get plus 12 pre-rationalism, and I think, 15 post-rationalism. Now this is insane. That's not even considering the adjacency bonuses your other districts are getting from touching your campus. And it's not considering the bonus you get from having a uh, greater than 15 population in your city. So all of this means that Hojo gets the cheapest districts in the game as well as the strongest districts in the game in a game that's entirely about building districts to win the game. Now with Hojo, we don't really care about campuses, but imagine getting a plus 12 theater square or a plus 12 industrial zone or a plus 12 holy site with work ethic. Now you start to see the power of this bonus. The rest of Japan's kit is just extra on top of it. The electronics factory is a factory, a good building that gives you plus four culture. Now this is very good since you'll be building industrial zones to get your district adjacency. The samurai is a man at arms that always fights at full strength, even when damaged. Again, very, very good for helping you defend yourself while you're building up all these districts. I love playing as Japan because it feels like it makes me really improve at my micro. I'm hyper focused at districting. I love placing pins from turn one. And Japan under Hojo is very flexible and you want to build waves and waves of settler. When I start playing as Japan, turn one I'm placing down my pins and planning my first three cities. I start by getting astrology and moving into my theater squares. I settle three cities near each other and I district a cluster of districts on flatland or whatever space I am allowed to build a ton of districts on. 
I use that to get a religion, hopefully, and I get a monumentality golden age, hopefully. If I don't get these, I don't get monumentality golden ages as easily as other civs because all of my uniques are later, but I do get at least usually a medieval monumentality. After I get this, I'm going to have tons of faith coming out of my holy site. So I'm going to settle another wave in another cluster of three cities. Are there islands on the map? I settle two cities close by and district away. Is there any area that isn't settled and doesn't have huge loyalty problems? I, if I put two or three cities there, I'm going to get more out of them than any other sieve. I need to watch my yield skyrocket as I just pile district as on top of district on top of each other. I think less about mountains and more about district districts where I am looking at wide open flatland there's tons of plains and flatland usually in this game and that's where I want to put my districts build farms up along my rivers so that I can sustain the population that I need as Hojo I almost always take Moksha and Reina as governors to buy more districts I feel that Pingala and Magnus aren't really necessary as Hojo I also feel like Liang is a little bit less necessary, but she to be would be more preferable. So I would take like Liang, Moksha, and Reina as my three main governors and just promote them up. I usually go for the Owls of Minerva or the Vo Void Singers. The Owls gives me the Culture Bank, which leans into what is already a culture heavy leader as Hojo. And Void Singers give me a lot of faith that I can use to buy more districts. And faith is something that I already have a lot of and, you know, we can't have too much faith. Hojo can really do any victory in the game very easily, but my preferred victory with him is Culture. You get so many adjacency bonuses for theater squares, and you place them down even cheaper, meaning you will zoom straight to conservation before most civs can even dream of it. You get a lot of great writers, artists, and musician points because you're going to be putting down theater squares so cheaply. Only Pericles and Peter, I think, can rival my production of great writers when I'm playing Hojo. My holy sites will be souped up to buy naturalists easier, and I can buy all the settlers that I need with my monumentality age. So Hojo does culture very well, 10 out of 10. I think science is the next most ideal way for Hojo to win. As I said earlier, campuses can be insane. Get a golden age and get free inquiry, and suddenly your very well district commercial hubs are also sending out science like crazy as well. Later in the game, your plus 12 campuses are also providing production with the heartbeat of steam golden age, and your crazy industrial zones will help produce space missions and spaceports really easily. So 8 out of 10. Domination also works super well. You get such good science that you'll stay ahead of most of the civs tech-wise. You'll get enough gold in production, as well as cheap encampments for great generals, and you'll have enough culture to get to cores and armies pretty quickly. 8 out of 10. Religion is also incredibly strong. You don't get the bonus towards profit points, but you do get half-cost holy sites. I think only Peter gets half-cost holy sites, but I might be mistaken by that. You get crazy faith generation, and you can send out a bunch of missionaries and apostles to spread your religion around, and the culture you have is going to get you those religious wonders before anybody else. Finally, there's diplomacy. The weakest victory, but still a very possible victory condition. You get production, you get gold, and you get culture early enough to get the key wonders. You are flexible enough to do the city-state quest really easily too. However, Japan does like polluting, which is always a drawback for diplomacy. So just 7 out of 10. Japan is the game's most flexible suit. Hojo provides the game's most half-priced districts. All of these combine to make a fun, interesting, and strong leader choice who makes it hard to lose games. If you find yourself easily winning by a good margin as Hojo, it might not be due to skill. It might be this broken kit. Hojo is an S-tier leader in my opinion. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.